Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday, November 1st. And uh, you're here on Bookie Monsters, where we look at the new releases uh, that are being released this week. Today, we are hoping to look at romances. My name is PK. Welcome or welcome back. I appreciate that you are stopping by. I'm a little bit discombobulated because the website that I look at new romance releases has already switched over to November and there's no way to go back to October. So we're going to be kind of bouncing around a little bit. Hi, Mary. Happy Wednesday. No trick. Or I didn't get any either, which was good since I hadn't bought any candy. <laughs> that's also very, that's a very good. You got lucky. It also means I don't have any leftover candy. Drafts. Exactly. Well, I did buy candy and we do have leftovers. But uh, that's okay. Yeah, no trick-or-treaters at all. Not even the three kids who live across the street. I don't know. Free candy. Free candy. All right. <laughs> Otherwise, I hope you guys had a good evening. If you went to a party, if you stayed home, if you were here last night, uh, whatever it was for your time. Uh, just some quick announcements. Uh, no sprints tonight. It's Wednesday. Um, if you want to head over to Sarah the Bookish Knitter, uh, she usually does sprints on Wednesday nights. Uh, my next sprints will be tomorrow night, Thursday uh, at 6.05 Mountain Time, 8.05 Eastern. Uh, but we are here to look at romance books if we can find some. Other than the really good website. But I can show you something I'm very excited about. Um, because of Sarah the Bookish Knitter, she is very much a romance reader and she she loves uh, the Harlequins and all those, the category romances. And I used to read them back in the 80s. Did I read them in the 90s? Definitely in the 80s. If you remember the category um, line, the Love Swift books, I those that was one of my favorite category lines. And a lot of very famous authors started writing uh, started their careers writing for those lines so it is looked down upon but they are a great proving ground for authors they are nice little boy meets girl has an obstacle gets back together kind of stories and just recently because of sarah i've gotten back into category and one of my favorite authors that i have found is shannon stacy and she has, a, now in romance, when you say series, it's not necessarily um, you have to read them in order kind of things. Sometimes it helps, but it, it's not a requirement. Good morning, Rebecca. Happy hump day. We had six unexpected trick-or-treaters last night. Uh, hopefully unexpected for you, <laughs> not the trick-or-treaters. Uh, Mary and I were saying we didn't have any. Neither of us had, had any. Indeed. So let me get rid of this banner. So um, anyway, the author that I really like in the uh, category romances is Shannon Stacy, And this series excuse me, is called Sutton's Place. And for some reason, in this series, she takes tropes that I usually don't like, and she turns them into something enjoyable. Uh, like unexpected baby kind of things. Um, I hate that trope, but one of her books is about that and it made sense. So um, I like her writing. And the next one in the series, book six, Married by Mistake, was released today on the Harlequin website in ebook form. Um, the book itself is released in December and the physical book, I believe, might be available the end of November. But uh, Harlequin itself releases the ebook version that you can only read on their website, on their bookshelf, not on any uh, Kindle or Nook or anything like that, or Kobo. Uh, but I like that series so much. Yes, I will read it on a computer. I read it on my tablet. Uh, so this is called Married by Mistake. And uh, it says, a husband for the holidays. When sworn enemies Chelsea Gray and John Fletcher travel to Las Vegas for a friend's wedding, the last thing they anticipate is waking up married themselves. Unfortunately, disentangling their wedding knot proves more complicated than they hoped. 
With Christmas fast approaching, the feisty barista and her copy-hating hubby are still living under one roof and wondering why their contemporary marriage is suddenly feeling suspiciously like the real thing. Yeah, I'm happy about that one. That one's jumping the queue. So I have come to appreciate uh, category romance again. So since the website that I really like for romance uh, books has switched over to November already, which means we can't look at the books that were released this week, we're going to be jumping to other websites. This one is insidersbookriot.com. Uh, so A Dish Best Served Hot by Natalie Kanya. It's a sequel-ish. Single dad Santiago, Santiago St. Vega gets a second shot at love when he falls for his daughter's teacher, but when duty to his family forces him to do something she'll never forgive while everything he's built come, come crumbling down. As the oldest grandson of 18 Vega cousins and now a single father to one confusing but way too wise five-year-old girl, St. lives his life based on one word, duty. It's his duty to follow in his grandfather's footsteps, serve his country, and guide his large family towards safety and happiness. Unfortunately, he's failing. His extended family isn't nearly as close as they had once been, and he can't figure out his daughter, figure out his, well, maybe it's why his daughter refuses to talk in school. With growing responsibilities at work and his new role as his mischievous abuelo's babysitter, Saint is barely treading water. Lola Leon is a teacher and social justice advocate who's more than willing to to uh, etc to the ground when she needs to she learned that from her grandfather a member of the puerto rican nationalist party and a longtime social social justice warrior when saint's mischievous abuelo pulls a mean prank on her beloved abuelo she demands papo vego to be kicked out of their assisted living facility and so on that's quite on and on but definitely if you are into reading those kind of issues. I just want love. Leave the, leave all that behind. You're here to enjoy, not get preached to. Sorry, my opinion. The Predictable Heartbreaks of Imogene Finch by Jacqueline Perkins. A beautiful story of friendship and second chances at love. Imogen Finch has just been through her 16th breakup. She saw it coming, so she's not as crushed, crushed as she might be, but with all 16 of her exes leaving her for other partners, she's come to believe a prediction her well-intentioned and possibly clairvoyant mother made over 20 years ago that Imogen would never come first at anything or to anyone. Is her love life failing due to a magical curse, insufficient effort, poor timing, or personality mismatches? Everyone has opinions on the matter. Imogen's ready to give up altogether, but when Elliot Swift her secret high school crush returns to their small coastal town after a decade of nomadic travels. Imogen has new motivation to try again. Elliot's full of encouragement. He suggests that her curse is not only imagined, it's easily breakable. All they need is one win, any win, and she can believe in love and herself again. Yeah, if you go in thinking this isn't going to work, it's not going to work. So now we're kind of going into new territory. This is a website called Fresh Fiction. And they throw everything in the kitchen sink in here. So I haven't totally trusted it. We can do some exploring. Daring Honor by Diana Munoz Stewart. Third in Spymakers Guild. She saved me. Now to save her, I'll have to face my violent past. 
Pony, the first male adopted by the notorious Parrish family, I've always tried to do right by my vigilante sisters. But when my attempt to protect my closest sibling goes horribly wrong, I can't face my family's brutal brutal retribution. I fake my own death and escape into the Caribbean. In Puerto Rico, I reappear as Lazarus Graves. My sense of humor is still intact, but not my sense of self-preservation. I take a risk that has me going under the waves for the last time. A thousand regrets soaking into my bones. Honor. When I plunged into stormy waters to rescue a drowning kite boarder, I had no idea resuscitating the sexy stranger would bring life-changing love and life-threatening danger crashing into my world. I had no idea he'd uncover a secret about my mother's death that would threaten the th powers that be and my life. Interesting. Let's see. Mystery. We'll get to sci fi tomorrow. Uh, we'll take a look at this one. We got a firefighter. Becca says, I agree with you. I read to get away from the preaching. Exactly. And the topics that we are just constantly bombarded with. Mary, we are under a freeze watch last. Oh my goodness. A long way from the 90 degrees on Sunday. Nippy out there, but more season like, wow. Yeah. After our dip into winter with three inches mm -hmm. of snow and very, very cold, we're going to be in the forties. It looks like for the first seeable days that they're showing. I'm okay with that. Ignite My Heart by Kat Baxter, a reverse grumpy sunshine curvy girl romance. Saddle Creek, Texas, The Whitmore's book number two. Can we add more? Oh, it's only 67 pages. Look at the cover. Hot firefighter. Moving on. Truly, I recommend uh, going to Harlequin website. They not only do the category, they, they also publish some of the other stuff. Missing by, sorry, I've got a hair. Lynette Eason. Searching for their daughter could be the last thing they do. When Lacey Gibson's daughter disappears, she'll do anything to find her, even track down a man she hasn't seen in 16 years. U.S. Marshal Mason Stone has no, had no idea he was a father, but when he discovers his daughter is missing, the, new, the news shakes his carefully controlled world. Uh, in a race against the clock, can Lacey and Mason work together to find their child before danger finds them? Interesting. Oh, we could do. Um, my... My... Uh, Yesterday was the last day to use, sorry, that was required. Yesterday was the last day to use my uh, witch's hat uh, icon for Gothic Tober. And I was thinking for November, the new one I was wanting to do was um, sort of, I know that uh, some people are doing Nora November, reading uh, Nora Roberts in November, and there's a couple other ones. Um, I was thinking of maybe having an excuse, shall we say, to uh, do rereads or nostalgia books. I was going to do Nostalgia November. And uh, was wondering from you guys if uh, you wanted to share what you were hoping to read in November or if you could reread a book or series, what would you reread? Um, I kind of had some set aside here, just going through what I had in my, uh, Becca says, I hope it warms up here. We need to big up. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's the time. So Looking at nostalgia, there was a historical author 
that I have a couple of her books. Her name is was Kate Ross, and she was one of the very first historical mystery authors that I wrote. None of her books are available in Kindle. They're only in um, physical book form. But um, sadly, she passed away at a young age after only releasing four of the books. And I had wanted to reread these. Yeah, these came out in 2010. I, that's when I, I read them. And it's a Regency era sleuth and like one of the very first ones out there so that was one i was hoping to reread i went and looked at my library uh the books that i have and i did have a, a used copy and then just looking at other things i'm going to be adding more to this this list uh for nora no november i might be reading her new release this month uh inheritance that's why that's there and one of my very favorite authors <laughs> growing up was uh, Rosamund Dujardin. She wrote in the 50s, and I just absolutely adore her books. I don't know why, but I do. So I might read one of those. Of course, I grew up with Tr Trixie Belden. Love, 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 love. I have those books. I think a couple versions of each book. Um, I preferred Trixie to Nancy Drew. Uh, I also preferred the Dana girls by the same writing syndicate as Nancy drew uh, to Nancy drew uh, book of three was one of my very first fantasy books I ever read. That was in grade school that I read these. If you've not read Lloyd Alexander, um, the book of three series using Welsh mythology, great middle grade um, and David Eddings books uh the series fantasy series was one of the very first se fantasy series i ever read so i'm just kind of making a list here on amazon of books i might want to either reread or jump into uh if i've not read them like i've not read any of the the uh Anne emery books from that same era so that was kind of what i was hoping to do for uh, like a nostalgia November kind of thing. And you'll see my little graphic uh, this month as I, as I use them. Jane Austen, Mary says, love your books. I absolutely love Jane Austen. I didn't read Jane Austen. Um, and the first one I read was Pride and Prejudice what, until I was in my twenties. So I could appreciate them. <laughs> my favorite is Persuasion. Which one's yours? And Scorpio says, good morning. Rebecca says, oh, Mary Stewart, absolutely. Got me reading Mystery Romance back. And I want to reread the Merlin. That's a good one. I'm going to reread the, the Merlin books. But also, you know, the, the light suspense, romantic suspense ones. Absolutely. And Scorpio says, hey, everybody. Mary says, yes, loved all of Mary Stewart's. Absolutely. And um, the Moon Spinners was my favorite in the contemporary contemporary romance suspense ones. Love that. Um, yes, absolutely. Thanks for the reminder. Mary says, hey, Scorpio, good to see ya. And good morning. We are in Scorpio season now. Go Scorpios. Woo. Um, so yeah, be thinking of maybe what you want to, uh, doesn't have to be, you know, like a uh, spy versus spy September that we did. You don't have to read every single book, but you know, allow yourself because we always have so many books on our TBR that you want to get to and they just pile up. And But you maybe don't let yourself reread something that you wanted to reread because you have to get to those new books. And a lot of these rereads that I'm, I'm contemplating doing are ones that I've read at this point. It's been 20 years or more. Um especially the, the young adult ones there. Um, so it's okay also to give yourself permission to, to reread things. And I guess the point I was getting, trying to get to there was rereading them now. I'm absolutely a different person than I was 10 years, 20 years, 30 as a kid. Growing up, um, I read a lot of the 
old Mother Westman books, if you're old enough to remember that, because they were my mom's. Um, so, you know, let yourself read a Nancy Drew or books from your childhood or, or books from when you were younger, like the Mary Stewart, Victoria Holt, Phyllis Whitney, all of those. Um, Anna Green Gables, or even ones that they have come out using those worlds. So if you love Jane Austen, you've read them all multiple times, maybe dip your toes into those, uh, the industry books, as I call them, all the, the knockoffs in that world, just as a, oh, I used to love these. So that was kind of my thinking around Nostalgia November. Um, I've hit my good readings, reading goals, so I can reread books that I, um, have just fond feelings for like daughter of time by Josephine Tay. I have reread that book so many times, but for a not large book, there is so much packed into it. I really, really love that book. So, um, I apologize. We didn't look a whole lot into romance, but, um, cause that website already switched over to November, but we, we dabbled our toes in that. And, um, also recommend if you like to read romance, it's okay to read category romances. They're fun. They're a nice little palate cleanser from if you're reading, you know, heavier things. But I think they, at least in my mind, of course, they've never gone away, but I think they have a new, oh, cachet to them, maybe. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys being here so much, or if you're watching this later, um again it goes by so fast but i love talking books i hope you love talking about books uh i wish we could interact face to face sometimes so we can just like, go chat 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 uh but this is the next best thing i hope you guys have a good wednesday i hope you're reading good books and they make you happy if they're not making you happy set it down it's okay i give you permission you don't get good person points i'll say it over and over again people are ingrained to suffer through books that they're not enjoying. And that is not what the reading process is meant to be. Uh, be safe, be happy, be warm. If you're cold, be warm, stay safe. Um, we'll see you tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening. No sprints tonight. Uh, we'll see you and the creek won't rise. Everybody have a good day. And Scrappy says, you betcha. So, um, everybody, we'll see you soon. Take care. God bless. Much love.